How's it going guys? For today's video, we are continuing Better Call Saul with Season 3, Episode 1, Mabel. Last episode was the season finale of Season 2, and basically what happened, the last, the very last scene, Chuck kind of put Jimmy in a really bad situation. He was recording Jimmy admitting to a crime that he had committed. And I just feel like this whole season is going to be Chuck screwing with and messing with Jimmy and just trying to ruin him completely. Like, what is Jimmy's line? What is Chuck's line? Like, I, you don't know what's gonna happen, but yeah. So we're gonna get into this. I don't know what Mabel is referring to, but we'll figure it out today. If you guys are interested in watching my full length reaction, be sure to check out my Patreon. I will be linking that down below in the description. Without further ado, let's continue on to season three of Better Call Saul, episode one, Mabel. Back in the Cinnabon, the more we get to see how Jimmy used to be, the more it breaks my heart knowing he's like this now. Like, you know what I think about? You ever think about, like, when your parents are, like, older and stuff and they go through the monotony of each day? It's like, imagine flashbacks of them more in their youth and, like, the BS they went through, the, the ups, the downs, the decisions, and just seeing how people end up. Whether it's good or bad, it's still just, like, crazy to think about, you know? To see how things have ended up. Like, how it almost, like, oh, does it even matter? I like how the only way they made him age was just by giving him like a like a bald cap with some hair coming out. Like thinning a thinning hair thing. Unless it's not. No, it isn't his actual hair. Is the old hair? So is this his real hair or the other hair his real hair? He has such a simple life. I wonder if he likes it. Oh, you be stealing, punk? Don't be pulling a slipping Jimmy. Except he's not a slipping Jimmy, he's just a thief. <laughs> yeah. He's not doing any scams. Ooh. Jimmy's invested. Check over that way, would you? You see a guy in a corduroy coat go by? Sir. Young guy, dark hair, corduroy coat. He gave him away. <gasps> Wanna come on out here? Gosh. Go ahead and open your jacket for me. How much did you steal? Placing you under arrest, sir. Nice job. Oh, no. Say nothing, you understand? Get a lawyer! <gasps> Get a lawyer. Jimmy, Asshole. he's giving the kid advice that he's entitled to. Like, he's entitled to have that information. Just because it makes your life a little, your job a little bit more difficult, I mean, anything. I feel like Jimmy felt really sorry for the kid because if somebody had snitched on Jimmy like that, if he did something like that, I feel like Jimmy really sympathized with the kid because he had been in that exact situation as well. And he's probably like, dang, I turned into exactly what I didn't want to turn into. Oh, you got icing on the face too. Can we take all the shit down off the walls? I'm gonna go call Howard. You do realize you just confessed to a felony? And he was recording the whole time. It's your word against mine. And Chuck's sitting here like, good, good over here. Do you think uh, Chuck is a top contender for one of the worst siblings ever? This isn't protection anymore against himself. This is straight up aggression against your sibling. That's so disgusting for <laughs> Like, it's just like a, a character. What's it matter what I said, Howard? Yeah, well, whatever it was, he's over it now, all right? And by the way, you're welcome. But it, that's a really cool shot, but it destroyed. I hate to say it, but I'm growing, like, disdain against Chuck. Just because that's just not how you treat family. Well, especially someone who, like, really loves and cares about you. Disgusting. Kenny! <laughs> At least use a little finesse. Finesse? Just, what are you... You're pulling the varnish right off the walnut. Huh. Well, maybe you should have thought about the friggin' walnut before you covered it in duct tape. <laughs> He's got a point. Roll it. Left and then right. Alternate the thumbs. Up and down. Left, right. I get it. Wax on, wax off. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Karate Kid. Seriously? 
Chalk, with what you're gonna do with that and ruin Jimmy's life? The Adventures of Mabel. You remember this, Chuck? I do. Mabel goes into the mountain How's and Mabel? she meets the king of the brownies and he gives her some kind of super delicious jelly in 1912. It belonged to Grammy Davenport. And mom read it to me. I read it to you. You have had this weird night light that you were so crazy about. It was Daffy Duck. It was some Daffy Duck <laughs> ripoff with this weird red mouth. Right. You wouldn't let anybody touch it. What was the name of that little girl that lived uh, three houses up from us? Always dirty. Jimmy. I liked her. She was Jimmy. Always... Don't think I'll ever forget what happened here today. <laughs> and you will pay. I love that he puts a boundary down so that he can't even be close or vulnerable with his own sibling. You didn't mention my garden. Well, your garden is part of your backyard. It comes with the house, Mom. I think you need to mention it by name in case some dirty judge decides to play tricks. <laughs> we can do that. You got it, Jen. Wait, sorry, Jen's the other one. Oh, hi, ladies. Jimmy McGill. Hey, Jimmy, we are almost done here. And I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, well, she's taking over. Jen, make sure the, the judge doesn't do any dirty tricks on your mom's property. And mention my lily pond. It's in my garden. It's part of the, yeah. Any other details within the garden? Perhaps something within the lily pond you'd want us to mention that the judge can't take from you? Thank you both for being so patient. And Mrs. Ahern, if you or Margaret ever need anything from me, anything at all, you can call me. This is Mrs. Schmasco and her daughter, Jen. Get my wires crossed a little. Uh, oh. Hi. You are a superhero. I owe you big time. It's an insult, just locking the door as soon as they leave. So how's Chuck? Crisis averted. I gotta get back to it. How about we call it a day, Elle? You realize how far behind I am? They're my clients. They're my clients. You and I aren't partners, remember? <gasps> Once I take these people on, I can't just reassign them to you. Are you getting all, like, legal on me, huh? Who cares? Oh, she cares. And look, if this is about the money... It's not about the money. You can keep the money. Jesus, like, I need more on my plate. Are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm just, uh, thinking about things. For 10 minutes today, Chuck didn't hate me. He was gonna hurt you. That's what he I was I forgot what about. that felt like. It's hurt him so bad. You do realize you just confessed to a felony? Yes. Now do you believe me? I believe you. Your brother is one world-class son of a bitch. No offense. I really wish you told me about these plans of yours before you went out and did it. Look, you know evidentiary rules better than I do, but a secretly recorded tape? Yeah, that doesn't You're gonna have a hell of a time getting that admitted. Yeah. I agree. Chuck, if that tape is useless in a court of law and no help in the court of public opinion, what's the point? Because I can't think of a single use for it. What, just have leverage over Jimmy? I can. Ways to hurt your brother? We know it wasn't natural. Let's look, oh my gosh, did you see the lightning? So combos I've seen in a quite a minute. We're closing in 15 minutes. Call me a cab, will you? What about your vehicle? Keep it. <laughs> but are you gonna have him clean up the mess? At least help him. Er how is it again? Herman Trout. Herman Trout. Just tell him to pull up to the gate and honk. Thanks. <sighs> he is racking his brain. You sell a gas cap for an 87 Caprice wagon? Should. GM cap should be the blue on the bottom there.
is, and he knew it. Who did it? It had to be Nacho. He's the only one that knew that Mike wanted to get rid of Hector. Of course he would keep his eye on him. And he doesn't want him to know that he knows. I only hope I didn't take too much of your time with all my dusty old photos. Your, your grandson's wedding was gorgeous. Roses, uh -huh. petunias, orchids. Yeah. They don't smell, you know. Well. And, and baby's breath and bachelor buttons. Okay. And Elisa the Valley. Now I've got something to look forward to. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. Who do we have next? That'd be me. Uh-oh. I escorted you and your clients onto my base. And now I come to find every word out of your mouth is a damn lie. And your so-called war hero, Fudge Talbot, no such person, never was. He was really looking forward to seeing him, meeting him. He was honored. Hey, what damage was done? Hey, who was hurt, huh? The B-52 is, I presume, still- B-29. Do not misremember the name of the beautiful bomber that we saw. You know what, if it turns out that Fudge wasn't actually in the war, Fudge is not a person. Well, neither was Tom Cruise. And look what Top Gun did for you. <laughs> you lied to me. You lied like to my face. Top Gun was an inspiration. I can't let you get away with it. I, I'm gonna tell you what's happening now. If you play that ad one more time, I'm gonna go to the judge advocate and we will take you down. Trespassing, false representation, a... stolen valor. That clear enough for you? He's really sticking to his guns. Let's do this. You bring your commander down here and I'll explain to him how you let us on the base because you lied your way in. Not how I remember it. What and happened? I've got witnesses to back me up. You think the United States wants to bring action against an old man in a wheelchair? He wasn't even in a wheelchair. What? And when he shows up in court, you better believe he'll be in a wheelchair. Right, because you're an ambulance chasing piece of shit. Always trying to make me feel like I'm... Oh, personal stuff coming out, huh? Thinking about Chuck, are we? I'm a lawyer, and this is what I do all day, every day, so I won't fly jet planes. You uh, stay out of court. Does that sound good? You think you're so damn smart. The wheel is gonna turn. It always does. It's got a point. Heavy foreshadowing right there. A lawyer you can trust my ass. Thank you for your service. It's embarrassing. Oh, that's rough. Especially coming from like someone who serves like an Air Force captain. I don't know what it is, but I'm noticing the cinematography a lot more in this episode. Like a lot of these wide angle shots that really give you the big picture of the area. It's like, I have work to do. Three thirty in the morning. Seriously, you get me that? Yeah, you put the put the lighter up to the piece of paper. Very good. And yeah, I know someone who can get it. How much? It's gonna cost you whatever it costs me, plus my end. Oh, let's start with that. Be about five hundred, but seeing that this is an after-hours house call, let's make it a grand. Double. Wow. Hey, how's the pup? She's not being left alone all day, is she? She's got plenty of company. I like that he hey, uh, this is going to take me a few days, so I'll let you know. Nice That's a draft letter from Kevin to the Arizona regulator. I know he likes the personal touch. He's going to love it. Did you get the rehearing moved up? Yeah. You moved it up almost three weeks. I'll give it another shot and see if I can do better. Oh my god, Kim's so impressive. Kevin will be popping champagne. That's so great. God, you should have heard how that arrogant jerk spoke to me at the hearing. He accuses me of muddying the waters. Muddying the waters. I mean, he's the one who can't even get the address right. Guys like that, when crunch time comes, it's always someone else's fault. Paige, thank you for everything. Thank you for cleaning up that mess McGill left behind. <laughs> Which McGill? I'd like to take one last look before we submit. Just double check a few things. Sure. Thanks. Oh, she's gonna get rid of Mesa Verde.
We're tired of the rainbow. How's it coming in there? Good. I'm done. Indecisive. Don't you want to keep going until you do the whole thing? If you're done, I'm done. What do you say we get the hell out of here? Sounds good. She saw another error. She didn't like it. She has to redo it. You ready to hit it? Sorry, I just need to check one thing. I think this isn't like him. I want to know what's going on. Ernesto? Morning, Mr. McGill. Um, did you get the, uh... Yeah, I got them. I wrapped them up, you know, for safety. That's very thoughtful of you, but I need them now, so... What electronic device is it? <clears throat> um... Batteries? Ernesto's really curious. Ernesto, could you come in here, please? Uh, would you mind uh, changing the batteries? Sure thing, Mr. McGill. He doesn't use electronics, so why is he finding this? Change 1261 to 1216. It was me. <gasps> Turn that off! Please. Uh, oh. You did not hear that! Oh, but he did. Oh, but he really did. As employees of Hamlin, Hamlin, McGill, you and I are both bound by the strictures of client confidentiality by law. So I'm not supposed to tell anyone? That's right. If something were to happen to you because of this, I'd feel sick about it. You're so, you would be the reason anything happens to him. I guess I'll go finish putting away the groceries, okay? Thank you, Ernesto. <sighs> Little smirk. swaps them then he they're gonna know that he swapped them and they're gonna keep tracking him back to his house they'll just know then like think about it like oh looks like he hasn't left his house in how many days it's in there how else would he know that or i'm not understanding exactly what's going on oh he's gonna short the battery Hi, it's for Tuesday. High temperatures will be in the mid 60s with mid 40s with southwest winds 15 to 20 miles to 0.7 FM. Thank you, Derek. Love the I'm going to stop making comments because, like, I'm honestly just. The intention is lost on me. Doesn't Mike get tired? <laughs> Able to, I know he's used to like doing stakeouts and doing all this because of I love the time lapse cinematography they use. I've always loved it when they do that. Time to change the battery. They are actively keeping tabs on him. Like all the time. But now he can track them. <gasps> oh, he switched it up on them. Oh, he switched it up on them. That was impressive. I don't know how that didn't come to mind for me. That was a pretty strong start to season three of Better Call Saul. So I actually didn't expect Kim to be so cold and matter of fact about it, but she is. And I'm glad that she's setting the stage and like having that boundary. So as much as it like sucks for Jimmy, she she was very responsible about it. And I appreciate that. You could definitely see the differences in their practices there. Ernesto, I think, is 100% going to tell Jimmy. And it's just not going to go well. Uh, Jimmy did a lot to Chuck and Chuck will never forgive him for it. But... I don't know, I just don't think you should outwardly ever treat someone like that. You see how genuine, like, Jimmy is and, and how much he's trying for Chuck. That really bothers me. This whole, whole dynamic is 
It's really hurtful to watch because it's destructive for both their ends. He's like, is Jimmy gonna break in? I hope Jimmy doesn't break in and show me love and affection unconditionally, because that's that's Chuck's biggest fear, huh? Chuck is an avoidant attachment. He is he's terrified of commitment. Oh, we got a creature on the right. Is that Jimmy? Who is that writing? No. No, who is that? He he knows he's there. Who is Move the red fiver. Oh, yeah. Who is this man? Why do the cards have holes in them? Once the casino pulls a deck of cards out of action, they drill a hole through them and sell them to the public. I suppose that's to prevent people from cheating with them. These are from Caesars. Hmm. I've never been. I really gotta commend Chuck, the actor that plays Chuck. He really can set the tone for his character. I hate to say it, but I think it might be time to kill the lights. Oh, yes, sir. Of course. Night vision time. Yeah, he just really, he's, he's really good at, like, holding himself a certain way. I mean, if it is getting dark, wouldn't you want to keep the lights on? Unless he is expecting something. I don't have a good feeling about Chuck's intentions. Noom. He got up close and personal with the- with them, huh? Okay, maybe not that close. Hey, you take care of that battery? Swapped it out a couple hours ago. The people who are tracking Mike. Now Mike's gonna kill him. Who's this guy? Follow that truck. Again, I'm convinced Mike does not sleep. He is just awake all night, all the time. Okay, okay, so they didn't know. They just parked down there. Wait a second. He's making pickups. Very similar to how Mike had to in Breaking Bad. Yes! He's he's doing pickups. We've we've been here before. We have literally been here before. Someplace very similar. So that means this has to do with Gus. Maybe. I could be stretching it like so far, but no, he has to come in eventually. We, we have to see the origin story of how like him and Jimmy and Gus, like they all come together. So I think this is going to be like their introduction. He's doing pickups. This is the same job Mike had, but it's very interesting. I figured it out. It's pretty cool. Mike tailed him all night. This man was none the wiser. Please tell me it's the Los Poyos thing. That car. Oh, Mike looks tired. Get some rest. Go home. Sleeps. Please show us the building. Please. Like, we already know what it is, so please show. Come on, I know they're keeping it out of, like, ugh, shot for, on purpose. The suspense is killing me. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Are we ready, are we ready, are we ready? Yup. There we go. There we go. Oh my god. Okay, so it's Gus. It's the introduce introduction to Gus. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Yes, I was so right. But how did Gus get involved in this? I understand how Hector would have. Hello? But not Gus. He must have been keeping an eye on him for a long time. Hey, I'm Francesca Liddy. I'm here for the interview. Oh, does that look straight to you? That side? I think you're a little crooked. The bottom of the M there. Oh, he looks sad. Yeah. So you're coming off of seven years at the MVD? I am, yeah. What do you think you learned the most working there? Patience, 
diplomacy. What about old folks? Lots of elderly drivers. After 75, they need to take their test again. So if they don't pass, you have to explain to them why their license isn't being renewed, which is hard for them. You have to have so much patience. She has the patience of a saint. I'm looking for someone with an eye for organization and detail. Well, DMV's great for that. Tons of detail in those driver's licenses. We did see hundreds of people every day, and you'd never want to let a mistake slip through on their forms. And I see here both Word and Excel you're comfortable with? Absolutely. Excel and Word? Wow, well, you had me at old people. Can you start today? Yes. Fantastic. No. Can you, you can't make that decision can you without just give us a second, Francesca. With, with Kim, you can't do that. Oh my God, tell me she's going to be like, no, Jimmy. But Jimmy basically tried to give her the job right away. Oh my gosh. He tried to go over her head. Don't you think we should see some more resumes? Like a lot more? Kim, you've been taking forever searching for a paralegal. Oh, we need help here. I haven't found the right fit. Yeah, because you're searching for perfection. You can mold someone who's going to work with you. You guys can work together. There's never going to be anyone that's perfect. If it doesn't work out, we can fire her. Look, I've got a commercial airing in 11 minutes, so the phones are going to be ringing off the hook, and I need help. Can we give her a test run? I got a good feeling about this. A test run? I think that's smart. Kim, you're not going to find perfection. They need to hear a friendly voice. Friendly? Absolutely. Put a little sunshine in your voice. Got it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Offices of Jimmy McGill. I'm sorry. May I put you on hold? Oh, no, no, no. There's too much, too much, too much, too much. Offices of Jimmy McGill, please hold. Sorry about that. What can I do for you? Would you like to come in for a consultation? Be folksy. Say, is that a dog I'm hearing? <laughs> She's good. She's passing the tests. Always helps to mention Cracker Barrel. I well, love that. I think she, he's like the elders love Cracker Barrel. I was thinking of going over to Cracker Barrel because they've got such great air conditioning. She's good on the spot. I like her. Well, yes, I love their biscuits too. Who doesn't? Mm -mm. Gotta go through that gift shop first. <laughs> Get to the biscuits. Uh, this Friday is open. Yes. We gotta okay, fix the Dorothy. wall. I am so sorry. Thank you for holding. How may I help you? Jimmy is busy at the moment, but if you'd like... Are you staying out of the sun? It's a hot one today. If you'd like to leave a message, Mr. Ermin Trout? <gasps> Ermin Trout. I hear Cracker Barrel has you excellent... You are not gonna win with Mike if you if you talk about the Cracker Barrel. Yeah, patch that one through. Mr. He's, McGill will take your call. He is not the Cracker Barrel type. Hey. Your new assistant's a real pip. Thanks for crushing her spirit on the first day. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You drive safe. You the only one on this line? Yeah. You free for breakfast tomorrow? Oh, it's a date. Yes, of course. Anything for you, Mike. You're gonna go inside, buy a cup of coffee, a meal, whatever, and sit in a booth. It's a guy in an old green Chevy Blazer who's gonna pull into that parking lot. I need you to keep an eye on the knapsack. Let me know what he does with it. Yeah, what's in the bag? Are you about to see Gus? I'm guessing money. Tell me I'm right. He is gonna be here any minute. I'll do the job. You charmed me into it. Like, how did the head honcho get, like, visuals on, on Mike? I just don't get it. Like, out of any, anyone under him, I understand, keep an eye on, but, like, the head honcho, Gus. Uh, I have a Poyos and a classic and a coffee, black. Your total's 319. What? That's it? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that it's, like, the early 2000s. I would love to experience those prices at one point in my life. And the service. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. But the funny part is, Gus definitely has his eye on Jimmy at this very second. The fact that's popping off in the morning, the weekday morning. I love that they kept a lot of the same actors. Here we go. So he just goes to the back. Yeah, no problem. Do you need any extra salsa? Yeah, give me that. Jimmy's not doing a good job being inconspicuous. Ay! <laughs> Why not scare me? Oh, he's awesome. Being so suspicious. Oh, I don't like how nerve wracking this is for me. There's nothing that should actually be making me nervous. That's Gus. I know. I know that color. That, that's Gus. Oh my god. He knows. Gus knows. He's like, we can't do business right now. Because he, you're being watched. Because Gus left, 
didn't interact with him, I think it means that now he has to leave. That was probably the signal. Jimmy, you are so bad at this. It's like overwhelming me how bad you are. Yep, not today. Gus gave him a very specific signal. Jimmy, oh my god, you are so awful at this. Really, just not subtle at all. Eat the food! You didn't eat- You do not throw out the good food. You Jimmy out here wasting food. Mm. That is one of my pet peeves, is wasting food. I know, you doing it with the mic. Jimmy is the worst person to do this. Why, Mike, why did Can you- Can I help you? Oh my god. And now it's Gus. It's Gus. Uh, my watch, uh, clasp, uh, is lucid. Allow me. Look at him. So You'll find it for you. There it is. Oh, may I clean this for you? I uh, know, it's so been in worse places. That was very nice of you. He has such a welcoming smile. Tell me again. He came in like you said he would. He ordered the number three, and he paid cash out of his left front pocket, sat in a booth on the east side of the restaurant, and put the knapsack on the floor between his legs. He didn't talk to anybody. He didn't even look at anybody. And you're sure of that? I literally checked the trash can. What's our next move, huh? You're not involved on this. You messed it up. James Bond stuff in here. I think we're done for today. What? Well, we're not going to do like, uh... Oh, Tail him to a new location. Thanks for your time. Mike is no nonsense. I like that they have this like mutually hey, beneficial relationship. Very who's symbiotic. got your back? Me. That's who. Love him. I'll I keep that in mind. I really love him. It makes me sad to know that Mike eventually threatens Jimmy. He knows all. If there's anyone that has eyes in the back of his head, it's him. Look at that deadpan stare. <gasps> there's the real Gus that comes out. Hmm. Is that a green knapsack? That is a car that is on a mission. Hmm. And Jimmy's not even here. The conference call with the Arizona regulator needs to be rescheduled Thursday, okay? Oh yeah, that's fine. We got any more of those dietetic butter cookies? I can check. She get her hair like that. I love that. She got so silky hair. Hey, Ernie, what's up? Can't you just come inside? Oh, we love Ernie. Sorry. What are you doing out here? I have some information, but I don't want to get in trouble. HHM, I think I'm bound by confidentiality. If I tell you what I heard and not Jimmy directly, like we have a buffer, legally I'm safe. Ernie. Can you please just comfort him, Kim, please? I want to thank you for bringing your mom down. It was a delight to meet you, young lady. Uh, Mr. Witchell, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Jim, can I have a moment? Apologies, Mr. Witchell. Uh, just be a second, folks. You guys have soup over at Cracker Barrel today? Give me a dollar. Hand me a dollar. Okay. Come on. All I got's a 20. Fine, whatever. I'm your lawyer now. If anyone asks me what I know, we have confidentiality. Why do we need confidentiality? Jimmy, what did you say to Chuck? Howard, right? Did Howard call me? <laughs> Relax. I would wait until the end of the business day. When I went to Chuck's place last week, it was like the inside of a Jiffy Pop wrapper. He thought his brain wasn't working because of the Mesa Verde. I kind of told him that he was right. I had to. It doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter who he tells because it's my word against his. Jimmy, there's a tape. Yep. He was recording what? you. Your brother was recording you. Ernie told me. He said Chuck has a tape recorder wrapped in a space blanket in his desk drawer. Ernie was putting new batteries in it for Chuck and the tape rolled for a few seconds and he heard you. Mm-hmm. He taped me. He did. That's your brother. He will do anything to destroy you. But yet I still think Jimmy is, is going to have this, this unconditional love and care for Chuck because that's his sibling. But I'm not sure what he can do with it. I'm gonna have to do some research. He made that tape for a reason and we just have to figure out why. I gotta get back to it. The lobby's full of clients. Okay. Yeah, 
wasn't the best time to oh, Hey, thanks, Francesca. You were great today. You too. Those folks love you. Who doesn't? Your brother. U.S. versus McKeever? No, it makes sense. You were a tremendous help, Professor. Thanks for finding the time. Can you go through the Macy Verde files in my office and pull all the ones labeled CRA evaluations and sort them by date? Absolutely. Thank you. I love that she does everything with a smile on her face. Just got off the phone with my old crim pro professor. New Mexico is one party consent, so Chuck had a right to make the recording. You said the things you did to make him feel better, which mitigates the admission of guilt at the very least. Outside the courts, what can he do? Play the tape for Kevin at Mesa Verde? I don't think Howard will let him near Mesa Verde with that tape. Howard knows it will make HHM look terrible. At this point, all we can do is wait for his move, then act accordingly. All right, then. Oh, hey, what do you think? There's one shiny ceiling. So I wanted it to look like morning over the Sandias. I like it. It looks nice. Doesn't look like a stock market crash. That's what I thought it was. No. Yes, it does. Don't lie. It's nice, but it kind of does look like a stock market crash. I'm sorry. You okay? Kim, I'm good. He's holding it together. He's doing his best. I can't believe he's doing it the way that Chuck taught him. Look how much he influences him. Just rip it. Nice. Oh no. You gotta pay Mike to do something? What if you just like roll past nonchalantly? Let go. Fancy. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. I'm gonna know he was being followed. And they left a cell phone on top. That's two steps up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a Howard car. He does not look happy. Howard, what are you doing? You're like sneaking around someone's property? Through the backyard? This is not very Howard like. I've yet to see this man without a suit. And he's gonna. Is he gonna scale a wall? Word. Oh my god, the air, the air. It hurts me how, how little air he gets. Oh my god, seeing Howard need to do any form of like physical activity is like the funniest thing. Oh my god. I love that he always has to fix his suit and be presentable. He can't be seen going into this man, to Chuck's house. What are you doing here? And you parked over on the next block. Oh yeah. What's the deal? So you, you have to hide them. The amount of hoops that Howard has been jumping through. He's been literally scaling walls. He has been trespassing over property just to talk to you. This has been going on for eight days now. And really, no indication that it's going to work. It will work. The cost of these round-the-clock private investigators right. is... They tried their learning. Really starting to add up. We have an ethical obligation to... Yes. This is an obsession at this point. I suppose we could limit the investigators to just nighttime hours. Jimmy will most likely break in while he thinks I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. You really think he's going to do that? I do, indeed. So it was a, a ploy this whole time. I know my brother. Chuck! <laughs> do you, though? Do you? Jimmy, go Open away! Open the door! Open I'm it not... now! Jimmy! <gasps> he broke the door down! My brain used to work! I'm sick! I don't know what to do! Asshole! No wonder Rebecca left you! <gasps> Rebecca left him! Here we go! Oh! Property. Is this it? For this, you destroyed our family? Yeah, what the hell, Chuck? I completely agree. Is that all there is, Chuck? This for this, you destroyed the Sorry, family. That's all there is? Jimmy! That's enough! He's heartbroken. Howard, you were a witness to what happened here? I was. And you? I'm a witness. You're despicable. He's heartless. Jimmy's heartbroken because of you, and he's still only thing he cares about is just destroying his brother. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, I cannot imagine someone being so vulnerable, so hurt, and your family. Like, and he all he did was try to do what's like take care of him. Okay, guys, we have a lot to talk about because we saw Gus. Gus has been officially introduced into Better Call Saul. Um, I didn't expect him to kind of keep an eye on Mike completely out of nowhere. I feel like that's definitely going to be explained to us. But I feel like the introduction was so menacing. We got to chat because there has been so much discourse in the comments regarding Chuck 
and Jimmy's relationship. There's a lot of people that are uh, team Jimmy, there's a lot of people that are team Chuck, and there's a lot of people who are in the middle. You know where I am? I'm in the middle, but leaning towards Jimmy. I do love and care for my family no matter what, so I understand that no matter what, when you have the best intentions for your family, um, you are there for them no matter what no matter what they have done to you. They are your family You are there for them. So like I cannot put myself in Chuck's shoes Jimmy uh, was the favorite child from his parents and Chuck was like I was the perfect son. He had like this weird jealousy thing I feel um, towards Jimmy and he, it just built resentment. I respect your opinions. Please respect mine. You know, we're here to just like share this experience and I think it's nice for us to learn from one another because everybody's different everybody views things differently so I can learn from other people's point of views and opinions and I hope you can learn from mine too so thank you guys so much for being so respectful and nice and I hope we can keep up with that uh, I appreciate you guys so much and I hope to see you guys in the next video bye everyone